Welcome to the Rebound Las Vegas, our ongoing series designed to get you back to work and back in business. I'm Trisha Keen. We'll spend the next 30 minutes showcasing hot jobs, talking about ways to keep your family safe, and we'll also look at ways to manage that stress so many are feeling. Here are this week's stories. The pandemic hit a lot of us pretty hard, but as things start to get back to normal, it's important to really get yourself in that right frame of mind. 13 Action News anchor Trisha Keene speaks with a local expert about the five things you need to do to rebound from the pandemic. For me, the pandemic gave me time to pause and really put in perspective what a priority was and getting a balance in my life. Debbie of Las Vegas says it was time to make some changes. She knew exactly what she needed. Well, it had a physical aspect. It had for me a spiritual aspect, an emotional aspect. She just didn't know what steps to take to make the difference. That's when Debbie turned to reset coach Barbara Jo Batterman. Counselors have a tendency to always make you look back and coaching moves you forward. And so I felt I was in a place where I wanted to move forward. I will be their support system. I'm not judging them. Barbara Jo says the pandemic has left so many people feeling like they need to make a change. As a reset coach, she helps people find a healthy mindset by creating healthy habits. So where do you start? Barbara Jo says the first three steps work in tandem. Your system works better if you do the three things and it's sleep, and it's exercise and it's eat properly. Barbara Jo says if those habits are out of whack, you're sure to be as well. Step four is to work on your appearance, whether it's the way you dress, a new hairdo, or maybe a little makeup. There are simple things that you can do, but it works like that. When you look good, you feel good. Step five is once you address necessary changes, set realistic goals. The biggest mistake people tend to make is trying to do too much. Don't set these goals for yourself that are unattainable. Take small steps toward making the appropriate changes and make them part of your regular routine. It's that consistency of doing those little things every day that makes such a, and it's really simple. It's not, but there's a lot of people that just need to be accountable for it. Debbie says it works. She knows because she's seen the results. I really think that what Barbara Jo teaches you, that is if you don't love yourself, if it doesn't start from the inside, it won't matter what's on the outside. So if you wanna move forward and you keep saying to yourself, I could do it on my own, and you didn't, you need a reset coach. In the end, Barbara Jo says, it's about looking in the mirror each day and loving the person you see. It's just knowing that you're worth it. For 13 Action News, I'm Trisha Keen. Some people are calling this revenge travel. We're making up for lost time and miles. But there are some things that still aren't back to normal and some changes may be here to stay. I feel safe uh, because I'm vaccinated. Jonathan Bernstein's coming back from a wedding in Virginia. It was a nice event because we were able to get together in a larger crowd without masks and celebrate a uh, nice occasion. Nice to get out of uh, Texas for a little while. Chris Bird is here because his wife's at a conference. I've never been to Cincinnati, so I thought I'd come along. It all feels so normal, right? Business at CVG's back to about 80% of what it was at this time in 2019. There's a lot of pent up demand. And even more people are getting back in the car. Uh, road trips are the preferred method of travel still. AAA says 95% of travelers are driving. 61% of Ohioans are planning a road trip. There are a lot of people that want to go to the beach. Yep. So the eastern coast is very, very popular with our travelers here in the tri-state area, as well as the national parks. But what restrictions are still out there? As of the start of July, almost none in the U.S. A couple of cities have mask mandates still, but our border with Canada is still closed to tourists for a while. And if you're headed overseas, you may need to show a negative test. You can get one at CVG now for a price. And you will have to show a negative test to get back. What about when you get to your destination? Most hotel groups still have some amenities and housekeeping restricted. One union says we should get used to that. A new report from hospitality union Unite Here claims as many as 39% of housekeeping jobs could never come back as some hotels move to end daily room cleaning and make it request only. Hilton tells WCPO 9 News its digital key for contactless check-in and check-out continues to expand and you'll be able to choose what, if any, housekeeping you want during your stay moving forward. 
Back at CVG, we've kind of made the turn. Beneath these federally mandated masks, you know there are smiles. I don't think it's over, but I do think that uh, we certainly have made much, much progress, and I think we can start normalizing things again. I'm Evan Millward, WCPO 9 News. Welcome back to The Rebound Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories that you're watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash rebound. The pandemic forced restaurants to close their doors and rely on delivery to survive, but a lot of restaurant owners say fee fees from third-party delivery apps did not help. 13 Action News anchor Trisha Keen speaks with some local businesses banding together to solve their delivery needs. We are a vegan uh, Mexican taco shop. We have 15 to 20 different tacos on the menu. Kristen Corral says the pandemic changed the way they did business at a restaurant, Tacatarian, with two locations in the valley. When we reopened, we were relying exclusively on takeout and delivery. She says in just one month, she was paying $7,000 in third party delivery apps. Just to give you like a comparison, our rent here is about 3,500. So we were paying double our rent in just commissions to large tech companies. Kristen knew she needed a delivery alternative. She was inspired by a growing trend happening in other cities where businesses run locally owned delivery co-ops. Kristen says the idea immediately took off here in Las Vegas. I've got restaurants basically every day reaching out via our website saying like, how do I get involved? How do I get involved? How do I get involved? It's called Local Las Vegas, providing delivery for spots like Firefly, Fuku Burger, Samurai Sam's, and Soul Belly. The app works the same as other delivery apps, but with one significant difference. Restaurants aren't forced to mark up the fees. Our co-op fees are a lot lower. Restaurant owner Aaron Bradley with the Juice Box LV on South Durango and Warm Springs is among those to jump on board. When I heard that the restaurants can band together and create a local based delivery system that eliminates third parties, that eliminates the big tech, eliminates money going out of state or out of the community. I was on board in an instant. Aaron also points out when businesses save money using the local co-op, the savings can be passed on to everyone. The customers in giving them lower service rates or drivers with increased pay, or if that's giving um, a uh, dividend back to the restaurants that participate. Aaron says Loco was big in helping his business stay afloat during the pandemic. It made a huge impact. Uh, you know, I won't say that we were walking the tightrope, but we were getting close to it. As for Kristen, she sees the co-op not only surviving post-pandemic, but actually thriving with lots of additional restaurants in the months to come. We'll probably have almost 100 on in the next month or so. Um, so yeah, I'd love to get to like 200 or more by the end of the year. For 13 Action News, I'm Trisha Keen. In classrooms and in schools across the country, there is no telling how much learning kids have missed out on because of the pandemic. But for Kate Martin and Tafadzwa Musakiwa, their classes this summer have nothing to do with math or science. The biggest thing that a lot of schools are making a push for is that you can't necessarily educate a student if they're not in the mental state to learn anything. I've heard the word mental health be said more times than I ever thought. Tafadzwa and Kate are both counselors at Londonderry High School in New Hampshire. Classes let out weeks ago, but some kids are still here. It's not summer school, more like summer camp. The goal is to help kids who've struggled to emerge from the pandemic. I think especially a lot of our kids feel a a sense of a loss of control and they don't feel like they know what's happening and what's going on around them. Making friends is one of the biggest things they're working on here. Parents and teachers nationwide are realizing that kids are dealing with a lot of anxiety when it comes to relationships because they lost so much social time last year. A lot of our kids were saying, I don't know how to make friends anymore. Like it's hard. I don't get it. Sometimes finding solutions is as simple as having students write down ideas to help with self care. They scribble words like crying, writing poems, and are even making vision boards for the future. Talking about friendships, we're talking about boundaries, um, doing some self-care, some meditation, some yoga, um, those team building skills that they might not have had for the last 14 months. School districts across the country are running similar programs and for good reason. During the pandemic, parents with children ages 5 to 12 reported seeing their kids had elevated symptoms of depression, anxiety, and experienced overall worsening emotional health. 
It's been rough for the last 15 or 16 months. Dr. Eileen Kennedy Moore is a child psychologist. She's seen lingering mental health issues with kids of all ages. The strain, the strangeness, the uncertainty, and the isolation have really taken a toll on kids and on families. Much like what the summer program at Londonderry High School is trying to accomplish, there is one thing she says parents should focus on this summer. If you want to know the number one thing to help your kid feel better about going back to school, help them make friends. The question is what's next? Like, what do we do with that? Because we've never been in a global pandemic. We've never had the fallout of one. Now what? At this school, a lesson in navigating life after the pandemic, even if it means staying after class. In Londonderry, New Hampshire, I'm Chris Conti. Welcome back to The Rebound Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories that you're watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash rebound. What we learned was God said, you know what, if, if the government shuts your church down, I'm good with that. And I think one of the things he accomplished was to show the churches how weak they were. A wake up call. And, and what work they have to do. I don't know anybody that likes what's going on. Already streaming Sunday services, Pastor Miles McPherson says his church was better prepared than most. The numbers online are going through the roof. I mean, our numbers online have gone a hundred times, 200 times. Churches need to be flexible to be relevant. Able to reach people worldwide, he says it's a powerful tool. Now, people do need people. I mean, if people, all they're going to do is consume online. It's very limited of what they can do. And so eventually you want them going somewhere. While in-person attendance is starting to rebound, polls show it's still far from normal. And church membership has been declining for decades. I don't affiliate formally with any of these religious beliefs, even though I guess I am sort of culturally Christian. Columnist and author Jill Filipovich has researched changing religious preferences and authored a book about millennials. She says many are leaving organized religion religion and not coming back. Part of a growing trend, religious nuns are made up of atheists, agnostics, those with no organized religion, and the spiritual. It's such a key part of the human condition to want to understand, you know, why am I here? What is my purpose? Some religious leaders worry the drop in attendance will outlive the pandemic. Gallup began asking Americans this question in 1937. Church membership was at 73 percent. It remained around 70% for the next six decades before a steady decline around the turn of the 21st century, dropping below 50% for the first time in 2020. That hasn't been my experience. Uh, our experience is that we have more and more people wanting to get involved. With closures expected to accelerate, his congregation could serve as a model for what's working. Churches that are engaged in the community that are addressing social issues that have a cause behind them other than come listen to me speak and give us money. He says attracting new members goes beyond the lights and live music. I went from doing cocaine, smoking weed, hanging out, being in the NFL to I'm reading the Bible. That's what I share about is how relevant the gospel is to your life, no matter what you're going through. And while they want people back in church physically, they're embracing new ways of reaching people. So it can help them wherever they are. In San Diego, I'm Amanda Brandeis. I made up my mind when I was six that I was going to be an art student. 91 years of experience later, Gerda Rovich has learned a lot about art. Her collages have been well known in the Boulder area where she's lived for more than 60 years. The community has just loved her and uh, the, the sense of balance and whimsy in her pieces just make people happy and inspire other artists. That's just a few reasons why Rob Lance felt compelled to connect with Rovich back in 2019 when he opened up his art gallery. She was the first artist I reached out to. And the first artist to be featured in his gallery. That's around the time Rovich's eyesight would decline. I can't make pictures anymore, which is so sad. It's really a terrible loss to me. But adversity isn't anything new to Rovich. I had a little suitcase, my sister had one. Uh, and uh, we left forever. Rovich was about 14 years old when she fled Nazi Germany with her family in fear of persecution for being Jewish. It was life as a refugee that she learned some of life's greatest lessons. And during the, the flying bombs in London, uh, things came every five minutes and then there, there were sirens. 
then the all clear, then the silence were again five minutes later. To me, that's always been life, you know. There'll always be the all clear, which you should enjoy as much as you can. And because you know the silence will always go off again. Sentiments like those that inspired Lance to keep pushing through when the brunt of the pandemic made it seem impossible to keep a new gallery afloat. Just having the, the support of the artists and knowing how much it meant to them, um, it really just helped me push through it and decide that I, I can't give up now. The paintings hung on these walls tell many stories, each artist inspired by their own unique experiences. And like so many others across Colorado, our gallery and art bar is just glad people are able to show up again to enjoy them. Bayan Wang, Denver 7. Look, Welcome back to The Rebound Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories that you're watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash rebound. It's a grueling 10 day long challenge with a significant goal in mind to protect the Florida Everglades. Definitely wasn't easy. I slept out in the swamp for the whole 10 days, um, sleeping in my truck, hunting all day and night. Meet Mike Kimmel, the Indian town man, also known as the Python Cowboy and the winner of the 2020 Python Challenge. I was able to capture eight pythons in 10 days. Each year, competitors, both novice and advanced, take a stab at capturing the snakes, an invasive species to the Everglades, responsible for decimating wildlife. You know, they're very good camouflage and you could step on one without even knowing it's there. And if it's a big 16, 17 footer, you might find yourself in a bad situation. Mike says he's not sure the invasive species will ever be wiped out, but that progress is being made. Um, just this past three, four years with um, state contractors and, and the general public really hunting the pythons hard, we are starting to see some native wildlife make a rebound. The winner of this year's challenge will receive a $10,000 reward. Python hunting, it's all about dedication. It's, um, you know, hitting it nonstop. I'll be out there 12, 14 hours all night staring at the ground. I might not find one, but be sure I'm going to be there next night hunting again. Derek Lowe, WPTV, News Channel 5. The first payments in the Biden administration's enhanced child tax credits are due to start rolling out this week. Heads of households will receive up to $3,600 for each child up to 6 years old and $3,000 for each 6 to 17 year old. Half of that credit can be claimed when filing income taxes for the year, but the other half will be paid in monthly installments from now through the end of the year. About 39 million households and 88% of the nation's kids are estimated to be covered by the enhanced credits. More Americans are saying, I do. The wedding industry is making a major rebound as much of the U.S. is bouncing back from COVID-19. In addition, nuptials that were postponed due to the pandemic are also taking place as family and friends are able to gather again in person. One reason for a rise in marriages, aside of course true love, is many Americans have been able to save money during the shutdown while they were not able to go to restaurants or on vacations. Thanks for watching The Rebound Las Vegas on your favorite streaming device. If you missed any part of this week's program, just hit the back button on your remote and scroll down until you see The Rebound, and you'll find every segment we aired in this episode. Stay tuned for more from 13 Action News after the break, and check us out anytime here on KTMV Streaming, Las Vegas News on your time.